On today's show, we discuss the Jazz forcing a game five, if the Pistons can get Blake some more help, and the Celtics Bucks rematch. In Crossfire, what's the first round's best breakout story? What is the dunk of the playoffs? How about the postseason's funniest moment? And we discuss the Suns firing another head coach after just one season. It's Tuesday, April 23rd. The starter starts now! Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Old Number 7, and Tennessee Honey. I'm Jamie Skeets, alongside me as always, Tass Mellis. We got the Aussie, Lee Ellis. And over yonder, that's the bearded one. That's Trey Kirby. Hey yo! Hey yo! Trey, what's up tonight? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, the Bucks finished off their sweep of the Pistons last night. That's great for them. But a one seed beating an eight isn't huge news, except for the fact that the series win was Milwaukee's first since 2001 when Ray Allen, Glenn Big Dog Robinson, and Sam Cassell led the Bucks to the conference finals with series wins over the Magic and Hornets. Now, 18 years is a long time to go without winning a playoff series, and it brings us to today's question. What are some things you miss from 2001? For instance, for me, it's gotta be frosted tips, puka shell necklaces, oh, and Abercrombie man. and Fitch. <laughs> all of which I wore at the same time during my senior year of high school. You can see why I won best hair back then, but we want to hear from you. So let us know on Twitter, what are some things you missed from 2001? Send them to us at hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. All right, get those tweets in. On tonight's show, <laughs> Lee and I are going to step into the crossfire. We'll talk about those Phoenix Suns. we got a very solid play, but let's start with a little true or false playoffs edition. TK, take it away. All right, heading into last night, the Jazz were down 3-0 to the Rockets and playing for their playoff lives. And Donovan Mitchell showed up big time, outscoring Houston 19-12 in the fourth as Utah forced the game five deep in the heart of Texas. Guys, the gentleman sweep still on the table, but true or false, the Jazz can come back in this series. Nah, I think that was their <laughs> I think that, that was their championship in game four there. A lot of things went right for them, including Donovan Mitchell's 19 in the fourth quarter. Yet Houston missing a heck of a lot of shots. Their last 14 threes. Yep. Rubio 18-11. Jay Crowder shooting over 60%. Clint Capella fighting a, a bacterial virus. And the Rockets probably are happy that they got this quarter out of their systems before they go face the Golden State Warriors. Because if you recall, they had that 7 of 44 performance in Game 7 against the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals Game 7. So that's probably good for them. But all of, a lot of stuff had to happen on Utah's floor. I think the Rockets finished this off on Wednesday. Yeah, but let's look at the Jazz last two games. All they right. won last night, and they could have won over the weekend as well. This that, that Game could, 3 is a huge one. Exactly. It could be 2-2. Two, two, and momentum is important in these things. The Jazz know they played two stinkers in Houston. So surely they're not going to play another terrible game, Game 5. They know they've got some things going. They know that, for example, Rudy Gobert sat on the bench most of that fourth quarter last night. And you know what? That's not a bad thing. Quinn Snyder, you've just got to win a game, win a series, whatever it takes. If that means that one of your best players sits out, that's fine. Right. You know, so go out there and try to do things that work. The Jazz shot terribly in Houston. They only need to clear that up a little bit. Yeah. And maybe they're a chance here. And again, if Houston does go a little bit cold, which we know they have done in the playoffs, then there's no reason why the Jazz can't put themselves in a position to at least extend this series because they're a better team than what we've seen through the first two games of this series. So there's a chance, though unlikely. It's never happened. Never happened in NBA history before where a team's been down 0-3 in a best seven series and come back and win four straight. Now, a couple teams have gotten it to seven. Yep. Which is crazy as it is just to win three straight after being down 0-3, but all three of them ultimately still lost that game seven. I don't see it happening. It is a huge what if that game three. Mm. If Mitchell hits that three at the end, maybe it goes to overtime, they pull out the win, and then it's a 2-2 series. And then, yeah, sure, you could talk yourself into anything could happen in a best of three between these two teams. But I don't see the Rockets for at least in three more chances here going ice cold from the field because it's not really hardened to me or even Chris Paul. It's the other guys. It is your Eric Gordons. It's your Daniel Houses and your Gerald Greens who stunk it up in game four. I just don't see that happening three more times mm. in order for the Jazz to get a win every single time. But yeah, it's tough. I thought we all think this series was going to be a lot closer and maybe, maybe it still will. I mean, you say it could go back to Utah for a game six, but I'm, on, I'm with you here, Taz. I think this ends in game five and it's a little shocking because I thought it would go a lot longer. But the Rock has been a pretty solid team. And a couple of cool things for the Jazz that have worked out. Der uh, Derek Favors, fourth quarter minutes, and Jay Crowder into the starting lineup for Derek Favors. Yeah. Derek Favors just finished the game well. Uh, Jay Crowder got extremely hot, and that's why I'm 
I'm a little bit reluctant to say Jay Crowder's going to shoot over 60% again oh, and, yeah. ha and have that shooting night. He was great. The energy was really, really good, and it, it makes more sense than Derek Favors in the starting lineup because they're shooting the three ball from that power forward spot, and Jay Crowder's a better three-point shooter. Another thing to keep in mind is on Wednesday night when the Rockets will try and put away the Jazz, we're going to be watching, you know, soon after that, the Warriors trying to do the same thing yeah. and put away the Clippers. I mean, both of these teams, they want to get done with their series now because they know they got to go to battle. You know, this is it's going to be a civil war between these two teams. So I think they'll both do it on Wednesday night. But again, a, a valiant effort in game four, I think, from the Jazz to at mm. least extend the series. All right, Trey, next one. All right, the Pistons punched their ticket to the playoffs on the last night of the regular season. And last night, the Bucks punched their ticket home, finishing off Detroit in a sweep. Blake Griffin was an all-star this season. He's likely an all-NBA forward, but after him, it's a lot of question marks and not many ways for the team to get better. Guys, true or false, the Pistons should trade Andre Drummond this summer. Mm. That's uh, an interesting question because Andre Drummond is a guy who can get you 15 and 15 no matter what. He gets you a steal and a half and a block and a half a game. He's a very productive player, but you just wonder if he can translate that into playoff success or if he's got another level to go. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been an all-star a couple of times. We know he's got. Uh, we know he's an impactful player, so he maybe needs a different situation, different coach and some other players around him to maybe bring him into, an, uh, into a higher level of his game. And so if you're the Pistons and you think that's out there, I think you can get a pretty good trade package in return. I think there'll be a lot of interest in him if he was available. And so if you're the Pistons, I think it's probably worth exploring because he and Blake together probably don't have much higher of a ceiling than what we saw this season, assuming that, uh, of course, Blake comes back and has the same sort of season he had this season. Right. Yeah, this seems to be the... Uh the best case scenario for the Pistons, what we saw this past year, about the eighth seed, because we got the best Blake Griffin that we've seen in a very, very long time, playing 75 games, the most he's played in five years. Andre Drummond and Reggie Jackson couldn't do a lot in the postseason. Mm -hmm. Blake Griffin is 30 years old. You probably have another couple peak years max yeah. for Blake Griffin. Did you trade for him to finish in the seventh or eighth seed? I highly doubt it. So, do you trade Andre Drummond? I think you you could you could if if there's a possibility if there's a package out there, but there's also a lot of money on the books oh, with Andre yeah. Drummond. Yeah, 27 next year, uh, but then another 29 the following year. Yeah, Reggie wrong. Jackson is a lot more of a doable package. Those are the three highest less paid appealing, players. Though. Yeah, less appealing. Yeah, yeah that's but, why I sort of say yeah. true. And I, I, and when I say true that they should try and trade Andre Drummond, I'm trying I'm not trying to knock Andre Drummond and put this all on him that they just got swept at all. Because he had a very solid year. He's played really good over these last like three months mm. for the Pistons. But I say true because you just showed we just showed you the payroll. It's like, what else are they gonna do? I mean, outside of like just knocking it out of the park with the 15th pick maybe in the draft and they find a diamond in the rough. I mean, what are your other moves to be made because of your cap situation? So it has to be, in a way, move one of your big pieces. You're probably not moving Blake, but maybe a Drummond or, or yeah, possibly a Reggie Jackson. I think you're just going to get a lot more for an Andre Drummond than you are for Reggie. So I think, yeah, in a weird way, it's sad but true unless you're happy with being a 41-win team. Yeah, yeah I, I think, I think it's a Drummond and or Jackson. Yeah. If you're, you need another ball handler to take some of the pressure off Blake yeah, they Griffin. need some wings, yeah, something and, there. And it has to happen soon. So you trade Andre Drummond, you have to get a lot of money back in return. Uh, is that a great ball handler that you get back in return? Yeah, maybe. Uh, and maybe you can go forward with that. But it has to happen now. Right. Because, it's, you know, Blake, uh, three more years on the contract. But we had peak Blake right now, and mm -hmm. they finished in the eighth spot. Trey, our final one. All right, the Celtics got out the brooms on Sunday, and last night the Bucks joined them sweeping into the second round, meaning we've got a rematch of last year's classic seven-game first-round series, but this time around, Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward are healthy, Giannis is an MVP, and Joe Prunty is nowhere to be found. <laughs> Guys, true or false, Bucks Celtics will be better than last year. No, that's true. What's better than this? What's better than this? I mean, like last year, if you look at that series, it was like a cool indie flick. But this year is like a summer blockbuster because we got Giannis, like MVP Giannis. Suddenly you got Kyrie Irving, Gordon Hayward. I mean, the star power is just there in this series. And I think it's a tough series to even try and predict. Mm -hmm. I could talk myself into both of these teams ultimately winning uh, four games out of seven. So I'm very excited. But yeah, this is going to be more exciting. Even though it went the distance last year and it was cool to see the Bucs try and get out of the first round. They didn't, of course. But uh, this is going to be better because the Celtics look pretty solid against the Pacers. The Bucs just killed the Pistons. Let's go. I mean, yeah. for the most part, everybody's healthy. No Brogdon for the Bucs right now. No Smart for the Celtics. 
Seems pretty this fair. This is a real challenge for, for Giannis, too. I mean, he won his first playoff series against Detroit, but OK, let's put that behind us. This is a real test, yeah. and this will really show how much he's grown, how much he's developed, and how well uh, Coach Budenholz's system works in the playoffs because we know what they like to do. Get Giannis there so he can bully his way into the paint, and if he's not, if that's not an option, he can fire it out to three-point shooters. But will the Celtics be able to defend that? Because they're very good at defending yep. a three-point shot. So that's going to be a great uh, a tactical battle to look at. But also for the Celtics, Kyrie wasn't there last year, and he wants to show that he can carry this team. He's, he's a fantastic playoff performer, and this is his opportunity to show it against the number one ranked Milwaukee Bucks. I think what's going to happen is what's key in this series is if one of these teams can win on the road. I think that is what could really switch this series because last season, each home team won. Yeah. This year, though, Milwaukee has home court advantage. So I'm looking for that to see if Boston can maybe get a steal, steal one of, those. of those first two games and then sort of uh, wrestle momentum away from the Bucks. Well, the answer to this question is, uh, yeah, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo has grown into an MVP, and Kyrie Irving wasn't there last year. Two of the best players yeah. have grown uh, and, and returned. Uh, so maybe we just didn't want to do a preview until later in the week. Well, so we, we got to save our prediction. Yeah, we got to save our prediction. Uh, the Bucks are Matt. taking it. These these guys these two teams aren't going to start playing until maybe the weekend. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be a weekend, long right. time here. Yeah. So we got we got to you know, stretch it out a little bit here. But we're very excited, obviously. We're also excited for the rest of the show. We got lots still to talk about when we come back. Oh, Lee and I step into the crossfire. We're wearing basically oh. the same shirt. <laughs> Do I have shorts on? Oh. Find out after the break. <laughs> I think this one's a linen. The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7 and Tennessee Honey. And the challenger will go head to head for three rounds of questions at the end of it all. Declare a winner and they will pose with this beautiful bell. It's all playoff themed here. Round one. <laughs> Guys, those playoff lights can be oh so bright, but not every youngster melts under the glare of the postseason's glare. <laughs> Guys, who has been the breakout player of the first round this year? Here we go. Well, let me beat you to the punch here, Lily. Homer! Yeah, I'm Homer Simpson. I love donuts. I love my wife, Marge. I'm taking Pascal Siakam. I don't care Pascal if I'm a Raptors Siakam. fan. Yes, yes, he's going to win most improved. But this what? is sort of a breakout performance on the national stage, Lee. He's <laughs> averaging 22, 9, and 3. He scored 30 in a game. He's a superstar. And now, yeah, the, you know, he is. the people who didn't know him. We already knew that. No, they didn't. What do you mean? No, he won didn't. most improved. You've been on his wagon. He hasn't won long. most improved. He's going to win. He won the, the awards in June, man. Here's a guy who has actually broken out. It's Derek White for the San Antonio Spurs. He's more than doubled his scoring average through these four games. Wow, one percent. And he carried the Spurs to that Game 3 victory. He was fantastic in those first two games in Denver. Cooled off in Game 4 because Denver had to adjust their whole defensive scheme. You didn't vote Siakam for most improved in yeah, the you did. show. Oh, you oh, did. Oh, you oh, did. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. The shirt bros are going down. Here we go. Round two. Last night, Donovan Mitchell got his dunk contest on, throwing down a monster alley-oop on the break against the Rockets. Really got the people going. Talking best dunks of the playoffs. But guys, what do y'all say? What is the dunk of the playoffs so far? Here we go. Uh, I'm doubling down on Derek White for the uh, jam that You're he picking threw Derek down White again? Against Double the Derek Nugget. Homer! Spurs Homer <laughs> over here! Hey, in traffic, Paul Millsap, a great defender, Derek White just says, get out of my way, mister, and smashes it on him. <laughs> no one saw that coming. That's a brilliant dunk from a brilliant player, a breakout player, if you will. The yeah, dunk is good. It's not great because Miles Turner had one of the better dunks of the season, forget the postseason, of the season mm. period when he crammed this That's a nice on Gordon dunk. Hayward. Yeah. That dunk was so huge, the Celtics bench, like Shemi Ojale, they nearly got up. They were like, ooh, oh yeah, right, yeah. that was on our guy. So you know it's a huge dunk when that happens. Yeah. So I gotta go with Miles Turner. It's a little bit better than Derek White. Well, yeah, 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 but come on, Miles is a big man. Derek's a breakout player. We knew about Miles Turner. Oh, oh yes, yeah, we, we know about everybody according to you. <laughs> All right, final round, round three coming right up. Playoff basketball is fun, but you know what else is fun? Laughing. Yeah. Mm, I like laughing. Super fun. Yeah. Guys, what has been the funniest moment of the playoffs so far? Here we go. Well, let me just read you these headlines from my funniest moment from this postseason, all right? Late game fart wreaks havoc <laughs> on Philadelphia 76ers bench. Twitter tries to solve gaseous mysterious mystery on Sixers bench, and somebody drops a major ass on the Sixers bench. Those are actual headlines. <laughs> 
<laughs> about an incident that happened in a playoff series. By far the funniest parts are always funny, Lee. <laughs> well, that's always funny. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But listen, big hair. They are. Don't care. When I think of big hair, I usually think of Trey's glorious bronze. Well, thank you. But he's actually been outclassed by this fan in Utah with his yeah, magnificent do. She's even got a cult following or ever. Already, no one's following the fart man around. No one's going, hey, I want to be the fart dude. Everyone wants to support this lady because she's just bringing it out and it's beautiful. <laughs> Tonight's winner and still oh, champion! Baby, jeez! I want with farts, Lee. You did, Lee. You I had it until you started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you were laughing at me. I even, I even love it. your hair a compliment, Trey. I thought I did it then. When we come back, we got to talk about the Phoenix Suns firing another head coach and a lot more in the Up Down Report. <laughs> Farts up or farts down. <laughs> Lee tanks crossfire. <laughs>up down report let's see those thumbs on twitter hashtag the starters thumbs up or thumbs down first one the phoenix suns fired head coach igor kakashkov late on monday night because that's just what they do according to woge the timing on igor's dismissal was partly rooted in the sun's desire to compete against the lakers in pursuit of 76ers assistant coach monty williams the sun's next coach will be their seventh in an eight season span guys are you up or down on the sun's Firing Kokoshkov. Yeah, in five in five years for yes. Devin Booker. So what? Happy. Uh, happy. <laughs> yeah, because if they didn't fire him, it would maybe symbolise that the organisation is actually st getting a little bit stable and making some smart decisions by <laughs> firing him. It just makes sure that we know this is a crazy disorganised. Right, still the Suns. Yeah, and it's also good for Igor because he gets out of there and with his reputation intact, and he'll get a chance to go somewhere else and coach. There's no doubt he'll pick up another head coaching job at some point. Down he may line. have to return to an assistant role to start with, but I think most people felt he's been unjustly uh, served here in Phoenix and uh, people will want to take him on. He's highly regarded in the NBA world. Yeah, for everything you said is exactly why Tass and I are down. Stick to a plan, sons. It wouldn't be that hard to at least keep a guy around for two seasons. Maybe you pick up a point guard in the summer and then you can put forward a little bit more professional team going into next season. Clearly, it's going to be the job for another coach, though. It's so sad. I'm sure that he thought going in after having five years as an assistant with the Phoenix Suns previously that maybe he'd get a chance, but it's business as usual for the Phoenix Suns. And that's that. I wonder how many coaches they're actually paying then right now. Mm. <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> well, uh, there's a reason that they continuously hire coaches with no experience because they're cheap over mm -hmm. and over. Those coaches that they fired, they're all first year coaches. Right, mm -hmm. so you're maybe excited about the idea of them trying to get at least Monty Williams who has some coaching experience, That's, right? <laughs> well, you know, regardless of the future, this stinks yeah. for Kokoshkov. He, he didn't get a shot. He, you'd think that he'd get a chance to coach up a young team. As Trey mentioned, no point guard, extremely young. Just give him a shot. All right, next one guys, moving on. On Sunday, the NBA announced that the Nets GM, Sean Marks was suspended one game without pay find $25,000 for entering the off-limits referee's locker room following Game 4 in Brooklyn. He was not happy. And that wasn't the only punishment the NBA handed out to the net front office. Nets owner Joe Sy was also fined $35,000 on Monday night for this tweet where he supported Mark's decision to storm into the referee's locker room and give him a piece of their mind. So guys, are you up or down here on the actions of the Nets front office? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah, thumbs up. big thumbs. What, it, what? it does kind of set a bad precedent to mm. go barging into the referee's locker. First of all, get some security and don't <laughs> let anyone barge in there. I think that's important. It sets a bad precedent. However, I think it's good for the team in for general. Sure. Jared Allen, the, the net center, said, hey, this is great for us. It just shows that we're all on the same page, that we're not sort of separate parts within the organization. I liken it to Masai Ujiri before they played the Brooklyn Nets a few years ago, going up in Jurassic Park there in front of all the fans <laughs> and yelling, F Brooklyn! Well, one of the... That backfired. But, but, <laughs> it did backfire. And hey, Sean well, Marks well, probably knows... Too. Yeah, one of the, not winning. One of the uh, reasons he protested was a foul call late that was actually overturned as well. Yeah. So he was actually right in his protest. So he should get his money refunded, really, for that. <laughs> you know, I mean, he should, because if you're protesting call and then that call turns out to be wrong... You should, but I think it's obviously, uh, you know, as you mentioned there, you don't really want a general manager 
just barging in the door no. like that and confronting referees. There is a way to do it a little more uh, politely. But you like tasks like him going to bat for his, for sure, for for his sure. team. Yeah. He sends a good message to his players, I guess. The, the, everyone's there together on the same page. And it's better to have your GM suspended for a playoff game than to have one of your players suspended mm. for a playoff good game. Point. Not to mention Joe Sy is worth $10 billion, literally $10 billion. <laughs> so it's better for him to get fined $35,000 than anybody else who's only worth $9 billion and under, I suppose. Okay. You guys are making that great That Alibaba points. money. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. All right, fine. Final one here, guys, as uh, we already have two first-round series that ended in a sweep. Celtics took care of the Pacers. Bucks crushed the Pistons. And we could see another five series end in just five games over the next two nights of basketball here. So there's been a lot about a lot of talk about shortening the first-round series and going back to the shorter best-of-five format that we had way back in 2002. What do you think? Are you up or down? I'm getting rid of best of seven, going back to best of five. Oh, yeah. You like it? Big ups on this. Uh, You've been talking about this for a while. Yeah, yeah. I I just think the playoffs are very long, and I think that first round, if you can compact it a little bit, it might make it uh, maybe not drag on so much. And also, you know what? In that first round, it should favour the team that's on top those one through four, they don't have to go through seven games to get them through to that second round. And if they get upset, bad luck to them. Yeah, but it's more likely to get upset than in a five-game series than a seven-game series. Great. Good on them, then. But then that but doesn't that favor the, the higher-seated yeah, team. Yeah, but they shouldn't. I mean, they, have, they, they, get upset. they only have one game potentially on the road if they take care of their own business. I right. mean, if they get upset, then they deserve to lose. But the, the, you have two games at home and then one on the road. Well, why not a best of three, then? <laughs> Well, well, best of like one. <laughs> best of one. I don't really like one half. I don't really care. I don't really like it because it doesn't really shorten the playoffs all that much. Maybe a couple days, possibly. But as you mentioned, we're gonna have a couple series go long, a lot go short. We have a couple nights of simply those games at the end of series and just those games. I'm fine with it. It doesn't really change much. This season is long as it is. It doesn't, it's not making it any shorter, really. Well, there's a lot of people that do agree with you, mm. though, that would like to see a best of five. Let's hear from you guys. Jump on Twitter, hashtag the starters. What do you think? Shorten it up or keep it as is? Or, better yet, extend it to best of nine. Oh, yeah. Wow, let's think outside let's the box. March Madness. When we come back, Lili hits us with that very solid play. Forty games in forty nights. Forty games in forty nights. Four games on tonight, guys. We got a doubleheader on NBA TV: Magic and Raptors, Game Five; Spurs and Nuggets, Game Five. That series tied at two games apiece. And then on TNT, oh yeah, another doubleheader: Net 76ers. Philly tries to close out that series, and the Blazers in the nightcap game, trying to take care of the Thunder and end that series. A lot of good basketball on tonight: NBA TV and TNT. All right, we asked you. What are things you missed from 2001? <laughs> what do you got, Trey? Uh, some good answers. Matthew says, LFO, snarky and one t-shirt at Pete Sammy Sosa. It was a good time, no doubt. Got a lot of answers for Allen Iverson stepping over Ty Lu, but my favorite answer, very surprising, came up more than once. Shrek's opening weekend. Wow. Wow. People love Shrek. It's yeah. a great movie. It's a good yeah. movie. All right, Lily, VSP. Yeah, going to Detroit, a uh, pretty tidy one here from the Milwaukee Bucks. And now it does end in the dunk, but it's a beautiful play. Four involved, nice finish. That's what I call a very solid play. There are some fours involved here. The 44th wedgie of the yes, season. Yes, you got to believe. Marv Albert and Chris Weber take it away. This is house, oh, a wedgie. <laughs> I know the starters are going to love that. Shot by number four in the corner there, Mr. House, giving us 44. We're going to get to 50? Nah. Why? You, it's been a you, great ride. you have been doubting it for weeks. I'm a numbers guys. man. It's not going to happen. Doubting it for weeks. <laughs> All right. Drop podcast. We recorded it this morning. It's up, available to download. Go give that a listen. That's it for us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. And remember the best part of 2001 Fenway Park, the Green Monster, had no ads on it. <laughs> Race tonight, people. Enjoy the games. <laughs>